Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. God always keeps his word. In Numbers 23, verse 19, we read, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? God's ways are like our ways. When God makes his promise, he keeps his word. Now, in the previous chapter, Numbers 22, we read the story of Balak and Balaam. You know the story of the donkey who spoke to Balaam. Balak wanted Balaam to curse the children of Israel. But God would not allow that to happen. God says to Balaam in chapter 22, verse 12, Do not go with them. You, know, you must not put a curse on those people because they are blessed. Nevertheless, Balaam tried time and time again, several times, to get Balaam to curse God's people. Chapter 23, Balak expected Balaam to curse them, but he could do nothing but bless them. Balak says to Balaam in verse 11 of chapter 23, What have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies, but you have done nothing but bless them. <clears throat> Balaam tried three times to get Balaam to curse the Israelites. But three times Balaam blessed them as he could only do what God had commanded him to do. You see, when you're blessed by God, you are truly blessed. No matter what life circumstances may say to you, you are blessed. When we consider the promises of God, we must remember that God always keeps his promises. God's promises is for all. It's not just for a selective few, but for all men. But we also need to remember that God's promises are conditional or unconditional. Sometimes he makes a promise that is conditional. If you do this, then I will do that. But sometimes he makes a promise which is unconditional. When he sent his son Jesus to die for us, that was the fulfillment of his unconditional love. The promise that he would send the Saviour into the world. God always keeps his promise. And to make a promise is to give assurance that something will happen. A promise can put our mind at ease. As it guarantees a certain outcome. God is not a God that he should lie. It says, Numbers 23, verse 19. He does speak and he acts. He promises and he fulfills. In 2 Peter 3, 3 to 4, we read, Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own loss, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning 
of creation. Throughout scripture, God promised that he would send a deliverer. From the time when Adam and Eve fell from grace, fell into sin, in Genesis 3.15, we read great messianic promise. The prophets spoke of Christ's coming. In Isaiah 53, he describes <coughs> Jesus, how he was wounded for our transgressions, how he was bruised for our iniquities. In Deuteronomy 18, 15, it tells us, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet, like me from your midst, from your brethren, him you shall hear. The promise we have today is that Jesus would come to the earth. That promise has been fulfilled. For Jesus came. He came as a babe, but he died at the age of 33 on the cross for our sins. <coughs> Second Peter 3. Four says, where is the promise of his coming? When Jesus died, he ascended back to his Father. And so often we hear that Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back again. As a child growing up, I've heard that Jesus is coming back again. But we're told in verse 4, people ask, where is the promise of his coming? Why hasn't he come back yet? But Peter reminds us in verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness. He tells us that a thousand years in verse 8 is as, as a day with the Lord. And a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. Jesus is coming soon. And Peter reminds us that we need to be patient. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and live. God's promise is for all. God's promise is for all. John 3, 16, we read, For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, that whosoever believes on Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Jesus promised a saviour to the world. And the saviour has come. There is no reason to doubt his promise. For we must believe in his son, Jesus. We must trust him with our lives. We must allow him to direct our lives. And he shall give us everlasting life. God keeps his promises. Because he keeps his promises, we can go to him. We can go to him with our sicknesses, with our burdens, with our pains. In Isaiah 55, verse 1, it says, Come. It's that great invitation to come to the Lord Jesus himself. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah tells us that what God has to offer cannot be brought with material things. 
We're talking about spiritual things. Things that will last for eternity. The invitation is simply to come and receive it. Come and receive life everlasting. Come and receive abundant life in Christ. If there is a thirst for something more than what this world can offer, the invitation is to come. In John chapter 4, Jesus speaking to the Samaritan woman who went to the well to draw water, explained to her that he had something better for her than that which she had known. That which she had, which was the natural water. For the water that he would give would be a spring springing up within her. Jesus says in John 4, 13, 15, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. That promise of everlasting life is to all men, it's to all women, every boy, every girl. Come. Jesus says in verse 15 of John 4, the woman said to him, Sir, sorry, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. The woman realized, recognized, her need for Christ. That even though she had so many things going off in her life, there was something missing. <coughs> so she says, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Isaiah 55, the second part of verse 1 says, you who have no money, Come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. There is no need for money. The only exchange that takes place is that we give ourselves to Jesus and He gives us a new life in return. Come buy and eat. For Jesus says of Himself, in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Hallelujah. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. The promise of God is for all people. However, the promise of receiving abundant life is dependent on what we do with Jesus. We can even invite him in or turn him away. But Isaiah encourages us. Isaiah 55 verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. The time to receive the water and bread that God gives is now. Seek him while he may be found. While you have the opportunity. While you have breath to call upon the name of Jesus. When we come to him, we are called to leave our old life. So that he can give us a new life. Isaiah 55, 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the right unrighteous his thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. He will freely pardon. God promises us forgiveness of sins. 
Now Peter tells us if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The invitation today is to come and receive God's promise of life. Whatever your situation is today, I want you to know that Jesus is the answer. Come lay down your burdens that you've carried and receive abundant life in Christ. Does Jesus care? Is there any need to worry? Is there any need to doubt? No. Because he cares. He says to the woman, the water I give will be in you a spring of life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, if you haven't accepted Christ, come. If you're carrying <clears throat> burdens that are heavy, come. As I says, come. Come and receive his promise and know that he will not lie. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, your promise to the us is true. That you will give to those who ask of you. That you will not turn us away. But that you will abundantly pardon. And so Lord, as we come to you, continue to forgive us of our sins. Continue to cleanse us from all righteousness. And help us to walk in your promises, to rejoice in what you have done, for you give life and you give it abundantly. Thank you, Lord, for this great invitation. In Jesus' name, amen.